In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down this really fun Spider-Man swing landing effect. Before we get into it, consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. And if you're interested, the project files from this video are available on my Patreon to download. So to start off with, this is the nuke script for the video. As you can see, it's nothing super complicated. This bit down here is the CG of me, which looks like this. And then the top bit is all the invisible 2D cleanup that I did. If you know much about visual effects, how I did this is probably fairly self-explanatory, but essentially there's two parts to the effect. This is the raw footage, so I'm currently looking at the plate at the top of the script, and if I scroll through, you can see I'm actually in the footage the whole time. My friend Deck was helping me film this, and essentially I was just crouched down out of frame here. And then we did a few takes where as the camera panned down, I did a jump and landed, and then eventually we just picked the one that worked best. So the idea is that when I get to about here, just before I land, there's going to be a takeover where it cuts back to the real version of me, and then before this is the digi double that's swinging up here. So the first thing to do was actually remove the real version of me from the shot, just for those few frames here where I should actually still be in the air. It's really simple to do that. I just took a frame later on in the shot once I'd walked out of frame, so about here. I took a freeze frame of this and then masked out the section where I'm going to be and I needed to cover it up. And then from here I did a quick 3D camera track. I'm not going to go over how to do that in this video, but if you want to know, I have a video on 3D camera tracking in Nuke that you can check out from the card in the top corner. I did a really quick bit of roto around me while I'm still in the shot so I wasn't confusing the camera track with the movement. And then I just tracked the points, set the ground plane and added some basic geo for where the floor was and where the crane was in 3D space. Once I had a card set up on the floor for the ground plane, I then duplicated it and rotated it 90 degrees. This bit of geo is going to be for the fence that's behind me. And then when I combine these two in a scene, it gives me this. And then from there I just projected this clean frame onto those two bits of geo. I'm using a frame hold underneath the project 3D node which holds the camera on that frame and then the scanline render is bypassing that frame hold and going back up to the original camera so it's filming that projection for the whole shot. I turned on motion blur in the scanline render as you can see here so it was mimicking the motion blur of the shot as well so the patch bedded in better. And then because rendering 3D motion blur is quite heavy I just did a pre-comp of this patch on its own so it's much lighter to work with. So now I have this moving patch in 3D space, I can then just merge this over my background and remove myself from the shot when I don't want to be there. And then I've got some keyframes here where at the point where I want to reappear, the patch turns off and it reveals the live action version of me again. So I play that on the run, you can see it's fairly straightforward, we've got the clean shot and then at the right point I just pop back in and then it cuts to basically just the original footage. Once all that was done, I took the geometry that I set up for the scene and exported this to Blender. So it's all plugged into a scene node here as you can see, and then I'm using a right geo and exporting this to Blender as an Alembic, and then from here we can hop into Blender. This is what the Blender scene looks like, we've got the animated camera track down here, the 3D model of me, and then some animation. It's quite motion blurred so you can't see it massively in the final render, but there is a web here, and then there's a little bit of a cloth sim on it at the end of the shot, just as I let go of it. The digi double was probably the most time consuming part of this process. This 3D model was made using the Revo Point Range 2 3D scanner that I showcased in my last video. So to make this work it was pretty simple. My friend Deck who helped me film the live action plate also came around and did the 3D scan with me. So I stood in a kind of A pose in my living room and then he moved around me with a 3D scanner until we captured my full body. I then ran the scan through their software called RevoScan, which is for processing the models once they come out of the scanner. In here you can do things like choosing the mesh resolution, removing any overlapping geometry or floating points, and then you can bake out the final model with your textures to use in another software like Blender. So I then brought the OBJ into Blender and used the Rigify add-on to create this nice IK rig for the mesh. And then it was ready for animation, which is probably the second most time consuming part of this shot. I've said it before in multiple videos, but I'm not an animator at all, and animation really isn't my strong point, so I watched quite a lot of reference of gymnastics videos of people doing backflips to get the correct movement for the start of this bit. My main process was essentially just to animate the root bone, so as you can see there's not many keyframes on this. I just went through and blocked out all the main poses before I started animating any of the other bones, and then I would go through and kind of space out the keyframes appropriately so that there wasn't any stop starting motion in the animation. And then once that started to feel smooth, I started to animate things like the arms and legs. So this is all of those keyframes. So as you can see there's quite a few more of these. Once I'd finished blocking out all the main poses and got the animation feeling fairly smooth, I then went in and started animating more minute things like where the feet were pointing, where the eyes were looking and that kind of stuff as well. So eventually this is the result, if I look at it through the camera, you can see that's working pretty nicely. I had to do quite a bit of back and forth about how much speed I should have coming into the landing because I didn't want it to feel like I was decelerating as it cut to the live action. What I ended up doing which worked pretty well is I went to the frame where it was actually cutting back to me so at this point it's the live action version but I lined up the 3D scan perfectly with my body on this frame and then just allowed the interpolation between the keyframes before to kind of finish off that animation between those two points. So the last one I had was set about here and then the digi double just kind of automatically animates into the correct position. There was quite a bit of taking these keyframes and sliding them 
and back and forth to get the speed correct, but after a bit of fiddling it just kind of felt right. The web itself is also pretty simple, it's just a string of vertices like this that have a skin modifier on them to give them some thickness, as you can see here. Then I went into edit mode and selected the end vertice for each and pressed Control H and then did hook to new object which creates these empties. And then from here you can animate the empties to create the web animation. So this one here is parented to the 3D model's hand. So I move this, you can see that the empty sticks to it. That's just done using a child of constraint. So it's added onto the empty and then you can select the armature and the specific bone and then the empty will actually stick to the armature. And then this one here is just animated by hand for a few frames to shoot out from the hand and then go to the crane like so. I've keyframed their visibility to turn off before they're needed, so as you can see here, they disappear suddenly. And then when it gets to this point where I let go, I just did a simple cloth animation on the web, so as it's let go, it actually kind of springs backwards. That was just done by adding a cloth simulation, as you can see here. I created a vertex group for the bit that would be stuck on the crane, which is this vertice here at the top, and assigned that to the vertex group, just called pinning. And then under the shape settings, I just keyframed the shrinking factor to go from 1 to 0.5, as you can see here. So that means the web is nice and tight here, and then as it keyframes down to 0.5, it kind of springs... Where were we? That was pretty rude, wasn't it? But yeah, as I was saying, the rope simulation kind of kicks in, it springs backwards and goes quite loose, as you can see here. Obviously the lighting had to match pretty well on the CG double so that it would cut nice and seamlessly with me. So to get that working accurately, I took an HDRI where we were filming. So you can see this is the environment behind me. This is the actual same location. And it's got all the dynamic range I need to change the lighting to be exactly the right intensity. So then once I finished the animation on the 3D double and the web, I rendered it out of Blender and it was just time to do a bit of compositing magic to really bed it into the shot. So as you can see here, we've got some color corrects and stuff going on, a little bit of defocusing to match the plate and then just a little bit of light wrap and things here. So let's go through those one by one. The first couple of nodes here are just an exposure and a grade node and they're just matching the intensity of the plate a little bit. So maybe if I turn all of this stuff off actually. This is what the render looks like fresh out of Blender. So this first exposure and grade is just making me a little bit brighter. I did the proper technique of using a color chart and everything, so the HDRI was properly calibrated to be the right intensity, but when I comped it over, it just felt like the renders were still a little bit dark. So I just boosted the exposure slightly, as you can see. These next few grades are actually animated, and as you can see here, they're named face, shoes, and jumper. And what these are doing is when I come into land, I was trying to match my skin tones on the 3D double to be exactly the same as the real version of me, so that when it cuts, it's even more forgiving. So if I turn these off, you can see that my jumper was a bit bright, my face felt a little bit pale, and this right shoe was quite bright when it cuts to the next frame where it's the real one of me. So essentially I just went through one by one and just drew some rotor shapes for my face, made my skin tones a bit darker and warmer, and then I graded down this shoe slightly on the right hand side, and then here I've just got a soft mask on my jumper, and I'm just using that to tame those highlights a little bit as well. And those three grade nodes in conjunction are just helping with that jump cut a little bit. And they're kind of animated to turn off, so by about here they're completely off, just so I didn't have to do the roto for the whole shot. It's all quite motion blurred and far away here, so it doesn't matter anyway. I've also got a node that's changing the black point here. If I go back to the beginning, you can kind of see if I crank the viewport gain all the way up, the black point on the CG in my jeans and stuff, as you can see, is quite a lot darker than the rest of the shot. So that's just lifting the black point up to be the correct level. I talked about this in a few videos, videos now but I'll just show it again because it's very quick. My technique for getting the black point right on CG is I will gain the viewport all the way up as I've done here. Let's just disable this one and do this again. Then I will color pick the black point and I will choose something in the shot that's really dark. So probably something like underneath this ledge here. So as you can see at the moment that's actually making the CG darker but then if I turn on reverse it will do the inverse of that black point operation. And now as you can see the black point on the 3D double of me matches into the shot much better. So that's pretty much all the color correction stuff. I added a very subtle defocus just to make the CG lose a little bit of that pin sharpness that comes out of CG renders. Not even sure how much you'll see that with YouTube compression, but it's just softening everything a tiny bit. Then I'm applying the lens distortion setup here. When I did the camera track up here, I used an ST map to actually understort the footage so you can see that this plate is understorted. I'm very fortunate that working at a VFX studio, I have access to lens grids. So I shot lens grids for all the focal lengths that I use for all of my visual effects shots. And then I created ST maps for all of them as well. So like I said, I tracked the understorted plate and then I rendered the CG with a bit of overscan, as you can see here. And then I'm just reapplying that lens distortion onto the shot afterwards. So the CG matches the plate perfectly. And then finally, I've just got a little bit of light wrap and the roto of the crane going on top here. So I turn this on. This is without it. And then this is with the light wrap. I tend to do two different types of light wrap. I do a really sharp one like this and then a much softer one like this where I turn up the diffusion. I just tend to find that one on its own looks a bit fake and never really gets the effect properly. So both of them in conjunction tend to do a better job. And on each of these, the mix is turned down quite low. So you never want to merge it over fully, otherwise it goes a bit nuts like that. 
but it just mixed in to be quite subtle, especially as the CG is on such a bright background, there should be quite a lot of light wrap. And then finally, I've just got some roto here of the crane. Obviously the CG is kind of sat behind it here. So I roto the crane back on top, Nothing special here, I just did a two point track on the crane and stabilized it and then drew some rotor shapes so I didn't have to animate it frame by frame. So they're just tracked on and as you can see, the crane is nicely rotoed for the whole shot. And that's all it really took to put this together. Overall, from start to finish, this probably took me about two days of work stretched across a week because I was just doing a few hours in my evenings. It's a pretty fun effect. In this case, I'm using it for a Spider-Man swing, but you can use this for any kind of superhero landing really. The trick is just getting a good digi double and then doing a convincing takeover at the cut point here where the jump cut happens. So there we go, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and you found it useful. Again, if you're interested, the project files for this will be available on my Patreon, as well as the files from all my other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.